Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I am going to explain you current in semiconductor materials. Basically, there are two types of current that flows through semiconductor material. One is drift current and second is diffusion current. To understand that, let me show you how many things that I am going to cover in this video. So first, I will explain you what is the meaning of drift velocity. After that, I will explain you one practical situation in which I will explain you how semiconductor material will react when we place this semiconductor material under external electric field. And based on this, I will derive drift current. At first look, you might be observing this derivation is a bit complex. But let me give you one guarantee. After watching this video, you can easily understand this derivation. Right. After drift current, I will explain you diffusion current in semiconductor material. And based on this understanding, I'll derive diffusion current density equation as well as I'll explain you how we can have calculation of total current density for semiconductor material that is a resultant of drift current density and diffusion current density. So let us try to understand first what is the meaning of drift velocity. So here to understand drift velocity, I'll consider one practical situation. Let us consider this is a semiconductor material here and this semiconductor material is not placed under external electric field. So right now I am considering the, here we don't have external electric field. So what will happen? See inside material there will be charge carriers. Charge carriers means there will be holes and electrons. So those holes and electrons will be having random motion. Random motion will be there. And the resultant of that random motion will be zero. Like see what is the meaning of resultant. Right now we are having material. So if you consider this material then how, much, how many charge carriers that is flowing through this material. That is a resultant. Right now we are not applying any external electric field. So inside material charge carriers will be having random motion. But resultant motion will not be there. So resultant current will be zero if you don't apply external field through this material. Now if you observe here, I am considering one charge carrier over here for simplicity. Here we are having one hole. Now without electric field, if you observe by this black color, this hole is moving like this. This hole is moving like this, right. But what will happen as if you apply electric field? If you apply electric field, then you see now trajectory of this hole that will get shifted towards this side right so this much this much shifting this much shifting that is happening due to external electric field so obviously to all the charge carriers inside material there will be shifting that shifting will leads to drift current and this shifting is happening as per drift velocity so here See this drift velocity is what? Drift velocity is a velocity of charge carrier due to external electric field. See this external electric field that is shifting this charge towards this side. Normally without electric field trajectory would be like this. But with electric field that trajectory that is changing and now you see this much shift is happening and this shift is associated with drift velocity. And this drift velocity is happening due to external electric field, right. So always remember when you calculate drift velocity that is always related to external electric field. And here this drift velocity calculation that is as per mobility into electric field. So drift velocity is how much mobility of charge carrier into electric field, right. So that is how drift velocity that we can calculate. So here you can observe this black color that is random motion without external electric field. But once you apply electric field then this random motion will be shifted over this side. So that is with electric field. So drift velocity that is happening because of external electric field that is mobility into electric field. Now let us try to understand second situation in which what will happen when you place material under electric field. So for that what I am doing is I am considering this material in which you can observe these are holes right right and these are electrons you can observe 
Now see what will happen. When you place this material inside electric field, an electric field is happening in this direction. How? You see this battery that is having positive terminal over here and negative terminal over here. So obviously electric field will emerge from positive terminal and it will get enclosed towards negative material, negative terminal. So this electric field is happening in this direction. So because of this electric field, these holes will be experiencing force in this direction and electrons will be having attractive force, right? So positive terminal that will attract electrons and positive terminal will repel hole, right? So as per this electric field, holes will be moving in this direction and electrons will be moving in this direction, right? Why? The reason is these charge carriers are experiencing force. How much force that will that those charge carriers will experience? Force will be as per Q into E. I think you might have studied that in 11, 12 standard E1, right? As per Coulomb's law, force is Q into E. So here Q is charge of this charge carrier and E is electric field. Holes will be experiencing force in this direction and electrons will be experiencing force in this direction, right? And because of this electric field, there will be flow of current. Now, if you observe, see flow of current, flow of current that is happening in this direction, flow of current that is happening in this direction, right? So flow of current that is there in the direction of holes movement and it is there in the direction of, it is there in opposite direction of electrons flow. So always remember conventional current flow that will happen in opposite direction to the direction of electron, right? So if electron is moving in this direction, current will flow in this direction. So holes and currents direction that will be same and electrons that will move in opposite direction to the direction of conventional current, right? So now you have understood what this charge holes and electrons that is moving because of external electric field. Holes will move in the direction of electric field and electrons will move in opposite direction to the direction of electric field, right? And see, because of this movement, because of this movement, you will be having drift current. So I have explained to you what is drift velocity. It is mobility into electric field. Now let us try to understand what is drift current. So you see drift current, that is current associated due to motion of charge carrier by applying external electric field and that will be I is equals to NEA VD where N is concentration of charge carriers, E is value of charge for charge carrier, for electron and hole it is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb but remember electron is having polarity which is negative and holes is having polarity which is positive but here we are considering direction so there is no need of that polarity placing in formula right so i is n e a v d where v d is drift velocity a is cross sectional area of material now if you divide this area with this current then you will be having current density current density is current per cross sectional area so j is i by a that is n e v d and VD that I have explained you, mobility into electric field. So current density that is NE mu E, right? So here N is charge carrier concentration, E is value of charge, mu is mobility, E is electric field and J is current density that is ampere per centimeter square or ampere per meter square, right? Now you see what I have done is I have considered current density for electron and holes separately. So for electrons, it will be Jn, where N is concentration of electrons, Q is charge of electron, mu N is mobility of electron and E, that is as per this only. And Jp, that is Pq mu P E, where P is concentration of holes, Q is charge of hole, mu P is mobility of hole and E is electric field, which we apply external, right? So here you can say total current density that is current density due to electron and current density due to hole that addition will be total electric field. Here if you take 
q and e common then you see n mu n plus p mu p into q e that is what you will be having and you should know current density that is conductivity of material into electric field current density is current density j is conductivity into electric field so you can have this conductivity in terms of mobility and concentration as well so you can have one another formula for conductivity calculation that will be sigma is equals to mu n mu n plus p mu p into charge right so that is how you can have you can have conductivity so this is what the basic calculation which is therefore drift current density this is what we have calculated for drift current density and drift current density that we calculate for external electric field applied to semiconductor material now second situation that i'm going to explain you that is diffusion current see diffusion current that is not happening due to external electric field diffusion current that happens because of difference in concentration in material now what is that if you observe here you see this is material now this is p type semiconductor material so obviously with p type semiconductor material what are the charge carriers holes so here with p type semiconductor material what i have shown is over here over here if you observe concentration of charge carrier that is higher and as you go in this direction concentration of charge carrier that is decreasing so diffusion current diffusion current that happens because of concentration gradient in material concentration gradient of charge in material so here you see concentration of charge that is higher over here right that is higher over here and as you go in this direction it is getting lower so diffusion current that will flow in this direction diffusion current always flows from higher density to lower density so here higher density of charge carrier is there so this charge carrier will try to move in this direction and that will make flow of current and that will be diffusion current right so if you observe here charge concentration that is high over here and as you go in this direction with respect to distance x then you see charge concentration that is decreasing so obviously diffusion current i that will happen in this direction now how much it will happen let us try to understand that so see diffusion current density that we can calculate as per jn that is q into dn into dn by dx see this dn by dx dn by dx that is concentration gradient of electrons and this dp by dx that is concentration gradient of holes this dn and dp those are diffusion coefficients of electrons and holes so diffusion current density due to electrons that will be jn that is q into dn into dn by dx and diffusion current density due to holes that is minus q into dp into dp by dx now you might be thinking like why i have placed minus over here my dear students see when you talk about charge polarity of hole then that is opposite compared to electrons that is opposite compared to electrons right previously when we were been calculating this diff current at that time we have already considered like this is the direction and this is the direction of electrons and this is the direction of holes but here but here with diffusion current with diffusion current you don't have assumption of direction of holes and electrons movement so obviously here we are considering like it will move from higher concentration to lower concentration but polarity of charge of electron that is negative and polarity of charge of holes that is positive right if you consider electrons polarity that is positive then obviously holes polarity that should be considered as negative that's why this minus sign is there so jn that is diffusion current density to electron over here that is qdn into dn by dx and jp that is minus q dp into dp by dx and now to have total current density of semiconductor material you just have to add drift current density and diffusion current density drift current density that i have calculated just before few minutes that is nq 
mu n e and this diffusion current density of electron that is q d n into d n by d x so you can have n type semiconductor material total current density and for p type semiconductor total current density that will be p q mu p e minus q d p into d p by d x right so for p type semiconductor you can have total current density as per this where you just need to understand one thing here there will be minus sign right and you will have to remember these formulas for solution of examples in competitive examination in some universities questions are coming based on this formulas even but usually this formulas that is very helpful in competitive examinations for problem solving so those who are preparing for competitive examinations they will have to note down this formulas and those who are preparing for university examinations they will have to remember this basic concept right but what i want is you just prepare overall study and in future right now you might be in third semester but in future obviously you will be preparing for gate or some competitive examination at the time this will be helpful to you if still anything that you would like to share please note it down in the comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video